Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, commander-in-chief of the Space Patrol! Now today's Space Patrol adventure, The Watchman of Warmont. On a recent voyage of exploration to the star Orion 14, 50,000 light years from the sun, Buzz and Happy discovered two planets, one called Gobonic, is populated by human beings whose lives are completely controlled by electronic thinking machines and mechanical robots. The space patrollers saved one of these inhabitants from an attack by a robot. Now, after a brief flight back to Terra for supplies, Buzz and Happy have returned to Gabonic with their passenger, Mono. The Terra 5 settles down in a valley hundreds of miles from the nearest city. Stand by for landing. Cut rockets. Hit repeller, eh? Yes, sir. Well, here you are, Mono. Back on Gabonic. I'm deeply grateful. I don't know how safe you'll be with those robots looking for you. The robots seldom stray far from the city, unless they're directly on the trail of someone who has escaped. And they don't use any kind of spacecraft or aircraft to search for you? No. Our only spaceships are the robot-controlled craft that take cargoes to the deserted planet. Oh, by the way, Mono, what do you call that planet? I believe it must be Warmark. At certain times of the year, a bright star moves across the night sky. Whether it is the same planet we visited in your ship, I cannot say. Oh, it must be. There's only one other planet circling Orion 14. You'd see it as a moving star against the fixed stars in your sky. I know you're anxious to explore, Warmark, for the mineral you're looking for, so I'll leave you now. All right. Have get that crate of space phones for Mono. Yes, sir. You remember how they operate, don't you, Mono? Yes, Commander. You want to be careful. Don't let these instruments get into the hands of the robots or the administrators. We'll be very careful, Commander. My first task will be to take one of these space phones to Anila in the city. Anila? Oh, that's the girl you told us about. But, Mono, how are you going to get to the city? I'll find a way. Here, Hap, I'll take the box. Okay, Mono. Careful, it's heavy. I've got it. Thank you. Open the hatch for him, Hap. Yes, sir. We'd like to give you more help, Mono, but we're outsiders. If we were to interfere actively, the administrators would turn the robots against us and also against large sections of your own people. Sure, they'd try to put down the revolt in a hurry. I understand. But with these spacephones placed with our sympathizers in the cities, we can tell the people the truth. We can tell them that half of all they produce is dumped on a deserted planet. Yeah, and when they hear that, they'll make the administrators change the robots. I'll open the outer hatch. Goodbye, Mono. And good luck. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye, Happy. And thank you for everything. So long, Mono. Let's get ready to blast off, Hap. Yes, sir. I hope we've done the right thing. You mean about the space phones? Yes. The Gabonic administrators, like that fellow Rokna, aren't going to give up a good thing without a struggle. Well, they could still have a good thing if they listen to reason. A robot government is a form of dictatorship, Happy. And dictators aren't famous for listening to reason. Now, let's see what we're in for on Warmark. Close ports. Fire jets. Up, ship, and away. In the chief city of the planet Gobonic, a girl sits at a crude table in a small room writing. Yes? Why, you're an administrator. Yes. I am Roknar, administrator of Class H functions and robot controls. And you are Anila. Yes, I, I'm Anila. Where is Mono? Mono? Yes, Mono. Your friend who works in the document reclamation plant. Where is he? Well, I don't know. That's the truth. I don't know. When did you see him last? Four days ago. We had lunch together in the fourth sector commissary. And you haven't seen him since? No. That's strange. You are such good friends. Have you wondered about him? Have you been worried? Yes. Yeah. No. I haven't been worried. Why should I worry? You're lying. You know that Mono has escaped from the city. Escaped in it? No, I didn't know he'd escaped. But you knew he was going to try. You knew he was an aberrationist. An aberrationist? Apparently, 
You do not know that a few misguided individuals have that insane idea that they know more than the robots. They feel that they can improve upon the routine and regulations set down by the electronic computers. Mono did nothing wrong. Anila, are you an aberrationist? Well, are you? No. I've done nothing against the robots. That's good. Since you are loyal to the Gobanic control system, you will be happy to learn that Mono will never return to the city. You know where he is? Yes. I happen to witness his tragic fate. Oh, no. He has no one to blame but himself. He fled and was destroyed. What happened to him? His fate is too horrible to describe. Perhaps you know some of his friends. People who may also be misguided. Perhaps you can keep them from making Mono's mistake. Oh, Mono. That's all, Anila. And I hope it will not be necessary to call on you again. Mono. Mono. Millions of DUs from Gobanic. Commander Corey brings the Terra 5 down on the huge spaceport of the deserted city on the planet Warmuck. The city is in ruins from a disaster that from all appearances occurred a century ago. Yet at regular intervals, robot spaceships from Gobanic land and dump their cargoes as they have for ages past. Mountains of unused supplies now almost cover the spaceport. Landing secured, sir. Okay, Hap. We'll stay in the ship till we make a thorough instrument check by spacephone, viewscope, and periscope. Oh, that city must be deserted, sir. There's no sign of life. Whatever or whoever wrecked the city sure did a thorough job. It looks that way. But if we're going to bring ships here from our solar system to mine super uranium, we want to be sure that Wormach is completely safe. Well, on our way back to Terra, the last time you said you thought robots might still be controlling Wormach. That's right. Oh, but, sir, the city was destroyed years ago. What would keep the robots running? And if they're operating, where are they? Somewhere underground or in a partly wrecked building. Perhaps they're harmless. Perhaps they're not. It's our job to find out. Commander, there's a ship in the viewscope. It's one of the robot ships from Gobanic coming in with another cargo. It makes me sick just to think of it. The people of Gobanic working like slaves producing goods to dump here on Warmock. If Mona's successful, it'll be different, Hap. Empty ships will arrive from Gobanic and haul this stuff back to where it belongs. Well, I hope that'll be soon. Let's check the instruments, Hap. If we don't pick up any robot probe rays, we'll get out and look around after that robot ship takes off. For several hours, Anila has lain on her bed in her room, too stunned by grief even to think. Yes. No, oh, no. Shh. Anila. Oh, you're alive. No, oh, no, you're alive. Of course I'm alive. Oh, he told me something terrible had happened to you, that no one would ever see you again. Who told you? The administrator, Rokna. The administrator was here? Yes, but it doesn't matter. Now he's gone and you're safe. You've come back. Yes, but I can't stay. Listen, something wonderful has happened. I've got news that will free all of Gabonic from the robots. I've got proof that the robot control system is all wrong. With this little instrument here, we can broadcast that proof all over Gabonic. Oh, no, I've never seen you like this. So excited. Your eyes, there. Oh, no, you've been through a terrible experience. Lie down and rest and I'll... Listen to me, please. See this? It's a spacephone. I can talk to our friends out on the farms hundreds of miles away. And they can talk to me here in the city. And the robots and the administrators will never know it. Watch. I'll show you how it works. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have emerged from the spaceship and are working their way around the vast heaps of supplies toward the ruined city. Each is armed with a blast gun and carries a miniature spaceophone equipped with a translator. Well... So far, Warmock seems perfectly safe. No electronic control signals, no harmful radiation. Half hold it. Look up there, at the end of that big stack of supplies. It's an opening in the ground. Yes, but was it there a minute ago? Gee, sir, I don't know. I don't think so. Smoking rockets. Look what's coming out of that hole. 
It's a giant beetle. It's a robot tank with legs and tractor treads. Oh, whatever it is, it's a monster. And it's coming right toward us. Get back to the ship, Hap. Hurry. It's gaining on us. Commander Corey. Commander Corey, this is Mono in Gabonic City. It's Mono on the miniature space phone. Commander, can you hear me? This is Mono. Yes, Mono. I can't talk to you now. Contact me in ten minutes. It's urgent, Commander. You've got to help me. Anil is in danger. Oh, whatever it is, I'll trade places with her. Commander, that robot's right behind us. Hey, it's closing in, Commander. We can't outrun it. Maybe we can hold it off a minute. There's a small space between those two stacks of supplies. Duck through the gap quickly. Yes, sir. We stopped it, sir. It can't get through the opening. Yeah, keep running, Hap. There may be other robots around. Hap, here comes one of those robot ships from Gobanic. Hey, we're right in its landing pad. Get away from this stack of supplies. It's probably going to dump its cargo right here. Commander, it's going to smash us. Hit the dirt, Hap. Oh, that was close. Look, a beetle shaped robots plowing through that stack of supplies. Oh, it's on our trail again, sir. They'll never make it to our ship. I don't mow us down before we can get a hundred yards. Hap, run for the other ship. Hurry. Great. The robot won't attack that. Into the cargo hatch, quick, before it closes. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Hey, it worked. The robot stopped. Maybe our blast guns will put it out of commission. Whoever built that giant watchdog must have put teeth in it. If we attack it, it'd probably blow this whole ship apart. Commander, the, the hatch closed. We're trapped. Well, at least we're safe from that elephant-sized beetle. Oh, we're out of one jam, and we're in another. This ship will take us back to Gabonic. Well, here we go, Hap. Relax and enjoy the trip. What happens when we set down on Gobanic? Uh, we'll stay in the ship. Then when it returns to Warmark with another load, we'll make a dash for the Terra 5 before the mechanical watchman wakes up. Commander Corey, can you hear me? Hey, it's Mono. I'd forgotten all about him. Uh, Corey here, Mono. Sorry I couldn't talk to you before, but we were a trifle busy. I was afraid you deserted me. I'm at Anila's place in the city. Yes? But there's a robot patrol in the streets. Rognar suspects something. If I leave now, the robot will follow me and Rognar will arrest Anila. He'll find the space opponents. If you can't help me, Commander, everything will be lost. I'd help you if I could, Mono, but there's nothing I can do. I thought of something, Commander. I may be able to get Anila out of the city. If you could pick us up in your ship before the robots track us That's down... That's just the trouble, Mono. I don't have my ship. What? I'm in a robot freighter bound for Gobanic. I'll have to ride out a round trip back to Wormach to get my own ship. But it may be hours or even days before that ship will be reloaded for blastoff. Days? Smoking rockets. All right, Mono. Pappy and I... Get to Anila's place and decoy the robots. You two could escape, right? Yes, Commander. It would give us a chance. Now, could Happy and I return to the spaceport and stow away in an outbound freighter without being caught? For a human being to get aboard a spaceship? Well, it's such an unheard of idea on Gabonic that the robots may not even be adjusted to detect it. Good. Now, what about our space patrol uniforms? Won't they attract attention when we walk down the streets of the city? I never thought of that. Of course they will. You'll be picked up as a non-conforming aberrationist. Well, uh, how can we get some Gobanic-style clothes? The work barracks at the port. During a shift, there'll be no one in the barracks. If you could sneak in without being seen, you could find some off-duty clothes. Okay. Now, Mono, give me the exact layout of the spaceport and how to find Anila's place. And the safest way to avoid the robot patrols. Tensely, Buzz and Happy crouch in the empty cargo hold as the robot ship sets down at the spaceport on Gobanic. A few seconds after landing, the cargo hatch automatically opens. Cautiously, the space patrollers peer out of the ship. No one in sight, sir, except clear over there. Over there where they're loading. That long, rambling structure down there must be the work barracks. Let's go, Hap, and keep on the far side of this row of ships. Yes, sir. Here's our first real test, Hap. The barracks. I sure hope there's nobody in there goofing off. Have your ray gun ready. Right. Hey, we're in luck. It's deserted. 
There along the wall, Hap. Those racks of clothing. Yeah, with the numbers over them. I guess they're numbers. Find a pair large enough to go over uniform, Hap. These look about right. Hey, is that an alarm? Maybe the signal for change of shift. Hurry, get into your outfit. This barracks will be swarming in a minute. In Anila's dimly lighted room some distance from the spaceport, the girl and Mono wait in anxious silence for a message from Commander Corey. The moments drag on. Then finally, Mono speaks. I should never have tried to involve the commander in our troubles. I was a fool to think they could make it. Mono, come to the window. What is it? They're gone. The robot patrol's gone. The street's deserted. Rope and I must have given up, at least for the time being. If I hadn't involved the commander in this, we could escape, but at least out of the city. Shh. I heard steps outside. In the hall. Hide those space phones quickly. I'll put them under the bed. I'll help you. There. It might just be the woman from down the hall. She sometimes comes. All right, you know. Don't move. Ropnar. Administrator Ropnar, if you please. Both of you, you are coming with me. No. No, not Anila. She hasn't done anything wrong. She's shielding an aberrationist, an escapee. Now, stand over there and by the wall so I can keep an eye on you while I search this room. You won't find anything here, Rognar. Better get a couple of your robot bodyguards to help you. By the way, where are they? They are waiting around the corner, near my surface car. You'll see them when we go to the discipline center. Discipline center? You can't take Anila there. I tell you, she hasn't done anything. Shut up. And get over by the wall, as I told you. Don't argue with him, Mono. It doesn't matter. If he takes you, I want to go, too. You shall, Anila, you shall. Now... Let me see. Where would the twisted mind of an aberrationist attempt to hide something? Oh, yes. <laughs> Under the bed, of course. Commander Corey! Don't pull that gun, Rothner! Wow, what a punch. Nice going, Commander. Pat, get Rothner's weapon. Yes, sir. You gave very clear directions, Mono. Oh, the young lady, I suppose, is your friend, Anila. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Anila, this is Commander Corey and Cadet Happy. Oh, how do you do? Here's Roknar's gun, Commander, and this other thing. I don't know what it is, but it was fastened to his belt. Oh, thanks, Happy. What is this thing, Mono? Do you know? Uh, be careful. Don't touch any of those buttons. That's a robot control unit. Oh, how does it work? I've never seen one up close before. Only administrators have them. There's some lettering over the switches. Perhaps I could figure it out. I'm sorry. It's not in regular Gabonic. It's administrative code. Perhaps I can decipher it. I've operated computers that use this code. Good. Here, Anila. This control unit is for Z-type ARG robots. Oh, the Zargs. Yeah, the robots that look like human beings. Yes. This switch is a zone alarm control. Bring all Z-type robots toward the unit if it's pressed. Uh Uh-oh. We don't need that one. The second switch cuts in the command circuit to give specific orders to individual robots. Could either of you give orders to a robot? No. There are certain key words only the administrators know. And this third button, that's a proximity nullifier switch. A which switch? It cancels the impulses that are causing a robot to act. If the robot is near, it'll stop. Could we get by any robot patrol or robot guard with that gadget? Well, most of them. Except perhaps those at the higher levels at the administrative headquarters. Good. Perhaps see if they can revive Roknar. They'll make him drive all of us to the spaceport. All of us? Yes. We can control Roknar with his own gun. Uh-huh. And the robots with this gadget. I think Roknar's waking up, sir. Okay, get him on his feet. You and Mono keep his gun in his ribs, and I'll handle the robot control. Anila, the space phones. Yes, I'll get them. Come on, Roknar, get up. You're going for a ride. Feeling the gun pressed against his back, Roknar, the administrator, meekly accompanies Buzz and his friends down the stairs to the street and around the corner where three human-looking robots stand motionless by a surface car. Buzz presses the third button on the control unit, and the robots remain rigid as Happy forces Roknar behind the wheel. The others get in, then Buzz orders... All right, Roknar, to the spaceport. Let's get going. You won't get away with this, Corey. Don't try any tricks. And drive carefully. Yeah, Roknar. The life you save may be your own. The reluctant Roknar drives through the city to the spaceport. As the car glides through the gate, Buzz presses the control switch and the robot guard stands motionless. 
Buzz forces Rognar to halt the surface car in the dark shadow of the stack of supplies. A few yards away loom the dim hulks of empty spaceships waiting to be moved to the loading area. It's all clear, Commander. No one's in sight. All right. Everybody out and get aboard the nearest ship. You too, Rognar. No. I can't leave Gobanek. It's unthinkable. Nobody's asking you to think. Anyway, isn't thinking just for robots? You're getting in that ship if you have to carry you. Get going. Let's go, Emila. Riding a spaceship, this is exciting. You're mad. All of you, completely mad. Mad, I tell you, you're mad. Completely mad. Half carrying the terrified Roknar between them, Buzz and Happy move swiftly to the spaceship, followed by Mono and Anila. Climbing through the open cargo hatch, they work their way forward into a cramped compartment. After a seeming eternity, the ship is towed to the loading platform and the cargo hold is crammed with supplies. As the hatch clangs shut, Buzz and Happy instinctively brace themselves for the shock of blastoff. When the ship is spaceborne, Buzz leads the others back toward the cargo hold. Working in the dark, they tie Roknar with strips torn from his jacket. Hours pass. And then... The repeller ray just cut on. We're sitting down in Warmuck. Warmuck? Sure. That's where your stupid robot system has been sending half the wealth of your planet. Didn't you know? I didn't know where it went. That wasn't in my department. Now listen, everybody. When the ship lands, the cargo hatch will automatically open and the cargo will be dumped out. Now wait till I get the signal. Then jump out of the ship and follow Happy and me. Understand? Yes, Commander. I understand. Now remember, when I give the word, move fast. Yes, sir. What about me? You got me tied up? You're going back to Gobanik in this ship. We just brought you along to make sure we'd get here. Yeah, you'll be able to work free of those bonds long before you get back to Gobanik. This is going to be noisy. What did I tell you? All right, let's go before that hatch closes. Give me your hand, Anila. There's Terra 5 right over there. Let's go. Bon voyage, Rockner. Commander, Commander, there it comes, old Beetlepuss again. What is it? It's a robot. It looks like some giant insect. Now don't look back. Just keep running. We're nearly to the ship. Commander, it's gaining on us. Get him aboard, Hap. Be ready to blast off. Quick, Anila, up the ladder. You're next, Mono. Into the ship. That monster, it's big enough to crush this ship. Get aboard, Hap. We're going to try to hold this robot off with a blaster. Commander, if you miss it, it'll go for you. Cadet, you've got passengers aboard. Prepare to blast off. That's an order. <laughs> Nice shot, Commander. You stopped it. I always wondered how those old-time big game hunters felt when they were charged by a rhinoceros. Now I know. You must have blasted that robot right in the control center. I sure hope that's the last of the robots here on Warmock. You've given me courage, Commander. Now I know that the robots can be conquered. Good, Mono. You've got a real battle on your hands back in Gobanik. The other ship with Roknar and his gone. Yeah. Yeah, it blasted off while we were being chased by that iron beetle. Let's get back to Gobanik. I think Mono wants to get to work and show those robots who's boss. Join us again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol! This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.